All right, today we'll take a look at a how to create a formal proof for a valid argument. So we're going to be given some argument to work out, and it's appearing down below here. The first premise is then not S, second premise being T, third premise being this conditional statement that also involves a disjunction. And then the last statement is basically a disjunction that has a conditional in it. And the conclusion will simply be R. Now when we do this, we're going to first work up the for towards the formal proof. We'll sort of do some practice work first. So the first premise, not S, is a good possibility to start because it's a single letter and it can relate to another premise uh, that involves it and is a little bit more complicated. The second premise is T and it's also a single letter so it's also a possibility for a good start but we'll have to see exactly which one we're going to start with. The third premise involves the letters Q, P, and R so there's no S in there, there's no T. So it's unlikely that we're going to begin with that premise. The fourth premise, however, has both a T and an S. So this is the most likely one we're going to begin with, this fourth premise for sure. The conclusion, once again, is the not R. We'll see that the best place to start is with the S or not S since it's in the compound premise, this fourth one, but yet is not within any parentheses. It just sort of sticks out by itself so it can sort of be picked on or picked off. Now notice the T in that fourth premise is hooked up with the P by a conditional statement and then that's contained in this junction. So we can't get to that T easily. Right? We cannot start there with the T. Okay, so we therefore want to start with the S, the simple S as our first premise. Then we bring in this statement, the compound statement, that involves the S. So that's the fourth premise. Now notice here we have a disjunction. That's the major premise since it's outside any sort of parentheses. And we have the opposite of one of the parts of the disjunction. Now that's the perfect setup for a disjunctive syllogism. And therefore our result, given these two premises, would be T implies P by DS, disjunctive syllogism. Alright, so let's use that T implies P with the T, which is our other premise that's all by itself, all single statement by itself. And given those two, we have a conditional and the first part of a conditional. Well, that's the perfect setup for a modus ponens, or MP. And given that, our result is going to be P. Okay, so we left off with P. We want to get to Q or P. And we can, by the use of a disjunction and the argument form DA, disjunctive addition. What's nice about disjunctive addition is that you can start with any statement, simple, or compound and add to it any other statement you want by the use of a disjunction. Now the reason we wanted QRP is because of the last premise that we have, the QRP implies not R. We wanted to get that QRP statement together and we have it. We have it from this step six here. So we now have an, 
conditional, the first part of a conditional, and therefore the conclusion is not R by modus ponens. And notice that was our desired conclusion. We now have all the steps mapped out for us for a formal proof and the logical reason for each step. Notice I have listed these numbers all 1 through 8 and they're going to actually be each step of the formal proof. So when we look at the formal proof we'll have a statement on one side and the reason on the other. So we started with S and T implies P or not S. Both of those were premises. And from that, we got T implies P by 1, 2, DS. We then brought in the T, which was the premise. And from those two, 3 and 4, and using modus ponens, we were able to get P. So notice the reason for the P is steps 3 and 4, and the argument form modus ponens. Once we have the P, we can add on the Q to get Q or P. And that's by DA. So we stu took step 5 and used DA to get Q or P. We now bring in the last premise, the Q or P implies not R. <coughs> and with the Q or P, we can then conclude not R by 6 and 7 exponent. Okay, so that's all we're going to be doing for today. Until next time.